So I'm going to call the uh, to order the uh, August 11th, 2022 uh, meeting of the Town of Deerfield Conservation Commission at 7 p.m. Uh, this is being held remote on Zoom. And meetings normally held being held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with Governor Baker's June 16, 2021 Act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL chapter 30A section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will, will not be suspended or terminated if technology problems interrupt the virtual broadcast <clears throat> unless otherwise required by law. Remote participation details are noted below and uh, on the posting of the town uh, and on the agenda is the remote meeting connections, the dial-in numbers, uh, the passcodes for to Zoom, et cetera. Um, so with that out of the way, we would ask that um, the, all attendees uh, stay muted um, so we don't have so much of the background noise unless you're asking your questions or commenting. And um, so then um, we'll talk about the meeting guidelines that we always do. Um, I asked that everybody, this is the Deer, from the town of Deerfield standard code of conduct that everybody speak one at a time. We follow the Deerfield code of contact of being respectful, uh, considerate to one another, courteous, uh, concise with your comments and non-repetitive please. And also add to that, uh, please address the chair, um, that's myself, Pete, uh, to be recognized to speak. And please keep comments to a two to three minute time frame, uh, unless you're doing a presentation, et cetera. Uh, but uh, we don't want to keep things concise and considerate and, and so forth. So with that, I'll do a roll call of the members of the Conservation Commission that are present. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin here. John Libby. John Libby here. Ben Byrne. I don't see her here from Ben. Uh, Pete Law here. Uh, we have three out of five, so we do have a quorum. We can proceed. Just before we get started and some of the uh, uh, new businesses and some of the other things that we have to get done tonight, I would like to introduce, introduce Amy Hahn. Amy's over here on my screen over in a block over here. Uh, she's the one smiling away. She's our new building uh, assistant. Uh, she's been with us almost two weeks, uh, right? So um, uh, learning a lot and um, it's already been very helpful. So we'll all get to know and uh, depend on Amy, I I'm sure as we move forward. So welcome aboard. All right. Um, so we, the first order of business is to look at um, the meetings from our July 28th, 2022 uh, meetings. These um, were sent out to to the Conservation Commission members. Um, I believe everybody has received them. Uh, hopefully everybody has reviewed them. Do we have any comments or revisions to the meetings as were submitted and, and forwarded to the commission members? I hear none, see none. So as such, I, I accept the motion to accept the, the uh, meetings as written. Sean, you got to make the motion because I submitted them. And you're muted, Sean. Muted. There you go. Uh, Sean Levy makes motion to uh, accept the minutes as presented. Okay. Do I hear a second? Can I second it? I don't know. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can second it, Kate. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, motion's been made and uh, seconded. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I would take a vote on accept the minutes as written. The roll call, um, Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Pete Law, aye. Kate Dublin, aye. You didn't call on me, but I'm. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at too many screens at once here. It's like I'm techno overwhelmed. Okay. So that's all good. 
Uh, thank you. We got that set. So I think we're caught up with all our minutes. Um, so we do have some new business tonight. And then most of the evening is um, kind of um, discussion of some some things for the commissioners. <clears throat> but we'll open up the public hearing on a request for determination of applicability it was filed by John Cunningham uh, for work submitted on plans for 198 North Main Street, map 140, lot 16.1. Um, the RDA is submitted with some additional information on some um, Japanese knotweed management um, information that John sent. And there's some additional information. So at this point, I would ask um, either Mr. Cunningham or your representative to kind of describe the project to us and um, see if you can add to anything in addition that was submitted. So thank you, Peter. OK, um, thanks. John Cunningham, uh, my wife and I are retirees, and we're considering buying the property from Mr. Decker, who's also on the call on the Zoom. Um, and we would like to build a single family ranch style house of three bedrooms with an attached accessory apartment for our daughter and grandson, which would be less than 1200 square feet, approximately 1150. And in order to decide whether or not to purchase the land, we consulted with Ward Smith to get an idea of the wetlands implications. And uh, he brought us up to speed on the River Act and the, the brook and the 200 foot area or yeah, area coming back from the midline of the brook. So uh, at this point, we're hoping to learn what we could do if we purchase the property in terms of building and siting the footprint and removing existing structures that are dilapidated. No offense, Mr. Decker. Um, and first of all, getting rid of the Japanese knotweed over several year cycle of cutting and herbicide application. I was able to get Professor Randall Prostek from UMass Extension to come out. He's a weed scientist. He walked the area, did some um, work, and wrote up the proposed plan that I attached to my application, um, which would start with spraying in September after it has flowered this year because it's a pretty severe infestation at the moment. I know several of you went out and saw it. And then letting it die standing in place taking it all down after the first hard frost. And then next spring, starting with the cycle of cutting it back in May, letting it grow and then spraying it in the fall and hopefully remediating and removing it all uh, a couple of cycles. And because of the River Act, we would like to restore that area um, to native species, which is the requirement that um, Mr. Smith pointed out to us so that the first area back from the midpoint of the brook coming towards the street would be removed of knotweed and restored to native plants. And uh, um, that's the first of three projects that I've described. This, the second is to tear down the current shed, which is the size of a two-car garage, the milker's room that is attached, and the remnants of a barn, which are overgrown by shrubs and trees. and um, each of those has a concrete pad to be taken out, approximately totaling 1,100 square feet of concrete pad floors to be taken out. Um, I pointed out, at least uh, to one of you, the two catalpa trees that I, I assert have to come down. One is leaning on the shed and will fall down as soon as the shed doesn't exist. The other is down amongst the knotweed. It had already fallen over and grapevines had grown around it. And so it's in the midst of all that knotweed infestation. And the third part of the project we hope would be to site our house as close to the street as we could, bringing in clean fill um, and digging a basement, a uh, full basement for our house, um, staying street side of the current existing structure. So not going any further than the farthest point of the dilapidated barn, which I think is about 130-ish feet from the street by my little wheelie calculation. Um, one update I can give you is that I've contacted the tree warden about the oak tree. There's a very large oak tree right near the sidewalk at the corner of the lot. The tree warden has come out, looked at it, done some measurements. He needs to consult with his superiors because 
the sidewalk apparently is further in than it's supposed to be in terms of town property versus private property. And so a decision on who owns the tree and what to do with the tree will be made by the tree warden and the town people. They'll let me know in about a week and a half what they decide. So hopefully that's an adequate uh, summary and not too long-winded. Um, happy to answer any questions I can. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Cunningham, thank you for the additional information. Um, now ask if there's any comments from any of the commissioner members. I, I'm new, so I did have one question. Um, is there a specific uh, request in the determination? Like there's a whole series of like, are you asking or is it within designated, you know, Wetland Protection Act area or, I mean, did we circle one of the filed um, requirements or the determinations? Because no, I would say the work that you want to do is within jurisdictional distances. And I would assume that that would require a notice of intent. And then a, uh, that would be a pretty easy thing to, to do an order of conditions for the kind of work you want to do. Is that about right? Well, it would be, we'd have to do a WPA form two, which is a determination of applicability of relative to the RDA of, um, and there's a, a number of, there's positive determinations um, that it is within the area. And some of those, a lot of those will kick in at NOI. There's negatives, a few negative determinations, one that is totally out of the area, which there wouldn't be anything, uh, but there's another one that gets used at times, which is, um, a negative determination noting that it is within the buffer zone um, but the work isn't going to affect the resource area uh, and then you put down all the conditions uh, next to that um, so it's a uh, I'd, I'd have to say uh, Mr. Cunningham I did check with our um, our DEP contact Tom Gruskus who is our, our uh, western <laughs> regional rider um, he was kind of he can't make a determination for us because it's the commission determination, but said it could be an NOI, uh, could be an RDA with conditions. Um, you are in the resource area because it is a perennial river. Uh, it's a flowing river, but the work you're doing, if you're, the work you're doing is actually outside the river riverfront area, the resource area. So you're in the, the buffer zone and the buffer zone will extend out um, at, at least that 100 foot and there's a question about the 200 foot. Um, and, and I noted on your application, and uh, I'm not sure where it came from, but you were talking of the 100 feet um, from the median. It was something in the middle of Bloody Brook, um, which I believe uh, in the riverfront area, you're, you're looking at the definition of it starts at the mean annual high water level. Um, so you're going to, you don't start midstream, start at the mid, medium high level, which a wetlands person can determine. Um, and there's, there's guidance in, uh, 310 CMR, um, to that effect of how you make that determination. A lot of it's done just visually by the experts, but there's also soil and, and, and plant reviews and so forth. Um, so I did check on that. Now, I think that the one thing that he was not, he's not a, 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 a not weed or invasive species expert. Uh, he's come across this. Uh, he knew this fellow at, at UMass and um, in some of the things that you propose to utilize and it probably, uh, it's probably an acceptable plan. You know, it, it probably uh, will follow in um, their guidance to do so. Uh, there'd be the conditions where you would have to use a, a mass certified um herbicide application uh, company and they would have to put in the, and, and so forth and so on. Um, so there is that aspect of it. And there's some other aspects of just where the buffer zone starts, where it ends, um, where all the delineation comes from with all the other things. So I don't know if, uh, before I go further, Kate, did you have any questions or Sean, did you have any further questions? Well, only that, oh, go ahead, Kate. 
No, it's okay, Sean. You go, and then I'll go. Well, it's this request for determination is for three, really three distinct activities, and uh, you know, I so like the work that on the knotweed is well within you know jurisdictional distances, and and I and I think everybody's on board with the work as restorative, and and uh, if we could set conditions under an RDA, I'd be all for that. Um, it's more the bringing in new fill and and digging out the new foundation that's where i don't know if that that is if that still continues to fall under you know can we do uh, uh approve an rda on three different things as one rda with the set of conditions that cover all three activities okay now, comments uh, kate did you have anything to add um yeah my, my questions have to do with sort of the delineation of things because nothing has been flagged like we don't know where the exact borders are we were kind of when we were there we were looking at it kind of guessing um and i think be, i think you need a wetlands person to come in and and sort of mark off where where is the you know where because when i was i was doing some research uh, this afternoon looking into how do you measure it and and where does where does the border start from the there's one that goes from the median high water and then there's another that goes from the bank um the edge of the edge of the water um to a hundred foot buffer zone so it's it that's a little confusing to me and i would like some clarification as to how much of the work is going to happen within the buffer versus outside the buffer um it's hard to tell from the maps that we have uh in this document and maybe um, an NOI would be clearer because it would delineate, it would show the delineation of everything um, with accurate measurements. Yeah, that, that was um, that was a point that um, I also jotted down here, uh, Mr. Cunningham. And, and again, we're not quite sure if we need an NOI because we can um, put conditions on the uh, RDA if it's a certain determination. If it's another determination that it it takes that out of our hands and goes to an NOI. Um, but it's a little bit hard to make that determination without some of the specifics. Now, some of your building um, material may be outside the wetlands jurisdiction. And therefore, if you brought fill in for the building, um, we wouldn't have any say on that. But if it falls within our jurisdiction, uh, then it would. Um, so I, I think there's still some more specifics and engineering to be done i don't see why you know it couldn't all be done um you know with one uh, process or another there was a couple of um there's one other thing i saw in the there was something about trenching someplace too i saw maybe that was oh that was in the uh, herbicide the application method uh, the edge of a man-made drainage ditch should be minimized to prevent direct spray or leaf runoff from entering water in the ditch. So again, that is resource alteration within the buffer zone. Um, and that would certainly come under jurisdiction, but I don't know exactly what that is, um, what the size is, how it would be contained, et cetera. So um, I think we got a good start here in a summary. Um, and I think, you know, the, the herbicide application from what I understood, not me being an expert in this money and by any means, but what I've uh, asked various folks on is probably appropriate and applicable. Um, there'd be work within the buffer zone that we'd have to understand just where that buffer zone is. And there, we would have to set up erosion control issues um, specifically. Um, and then there would also be um, you know, replanting of native species uh, and down by the um, the riverfront as well. We'd have to consider that. Um, I don't know. And Alice, we could maybe take a look at this or, or um, Amy uh, going on that just to make sure we don't have any um, endangered species in that area that should be all mapped out on one of the maps. I forget which one it is. Um, and just to verify some of those things. So. It's not on the current natural heritage map as okay. Uh, you check that, Sean. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. 
So I think there's positives, but uh, it may take a little bit more time to um, to really be it done. I think we need. I think what the board is saying and, and um, or the commission saying is that we probably need some more of the details so we get, know exactly where the delineation is because I, I believe it does have to it's either the mean annual high water level, which could be top of bank or bank, um, the river, uh, where that extends on the property, a little bit more engineering um, and design on that, which uh, I, I, did you say that Ward Smith had helped you up to this point? Yes, he initially okay. he initially had come out and, and walked it and gone down to the edge of the where the grass uh -huh. is growing instead and paced back off. Yeah, he examined it for us and you know told us about the River Act and um, just uh, gave us his first impressions. Yeah, um, and the reason I was putting in about the digging and the footprint of the house is because Mr. Smith mentioned the two to one trade off between the amount of restoration you're doing to native and the amount of footprint you can put on this, the remaining part of the land. And so I yeah. think here we were within those limits. It, and what we have right now is, I mean, there's some aerial pictures which have no, um, right. you know, grids on it. So I can't really tell what the size is. And then I believe the wording is, you know, a significant uh, or sizable knotweed population. Um, but there's no, again, there's no specific of, what that size is compared to is this a two acre lot or i forget no it's approximately one acre one acre so 40 right. 40 some thousand square feet um, right the uh, so, one the one aerial picture which had a, a map that said 8600 square feet that was done by daniel Sauls, who's a surveyor out of sunderland he okay. was taking a picture that showed where it was pretty clearly to him and just doing the aerial calculation the company land stewards incorporated which was came out and looked at it for spraying and and not we control said it was a little closer to 10,000 square feet they thought he had underestimated a little bit but north of 8,000 square feet yeah so we got to do uh, it all you know so so it's and about was, a 25 percent of your property there yeah I was sort of hoping that the conditions you would give back to me would tell me that I had to show you exactly where the hundred foot away from the, whatever that term was, high water. Uh, the medium high, uh, right. medium annual high be, water level. Yeah, that, uh, that would be one of the conditions that I had to, you know, get it surveyed properly and shown, but, uh, cause it's too expensive for me to do at a risk before I buy the property, <laughs> so. Yeah. Anyway, um, thank you. Let me think of that, I believe, after you open up discussion on RDA, Alex, Amy, you may know up top of your head, there's another 28 day clock or i think it's 20 <clears throat> the, the commission has to act within 21 days 21 after the after today yep so we have another one so we have some time to to get a little bit more information mr cunningham to see if we need to act on this rda um in one way or another we can do that by the um probably we can probably do that by the 25th meeting it stays within our clock um but I would suggest that we probably come back with suggestion that we need more of a definitive um, outline. So, you know, a, a plan and, and dimensions. Um, John, Kate, anything to add to that? Not at this time. Okay. I agree that we probably need to discuss it and just determine if we need what we need further. Now we can do it by the next meeting. Yeah, we, um, I think we, we may end up with a, a negative determination with conditions that we need more information, but I, I think I wanna reach out to DEP one more time. It's, a, it's an interesting one uh, in that it's Bloody Brook. Uh, we're between Riverfront uh, buffer zone, um, all sorts of, we got, you know, four or five things going on here, uh, invasive species. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're making us work on this one a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Cunningham, I see their hand up. You're just on mute. Am I unmuted now? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I just want to point out that if we do this uh, natural restoration there. If you look to the left and right, you'll see that the rest of that part of Bloody Brook is 
lawn going all the way down to the bank. And so, you know, we're doing right, but it's, you know, an isolated bit of the whole picture. Yeah. Uh, it's um, all timing of when these things happen and versus when the regulations came into place. Right. Um, so um, it, it is, uh, you know, a, a definite resource for the town, Bloody Brook coming through. So let us do that. We, um, we started the, uh, the hearing. We have to have it um, the determination back to you within 21 days. Uh, let me do a little bit more work with the DEP folks um, and see what we can put together to, to get it right for you. But I would put, you know, put in just so you're thinking that we probably be will need more definitive information down the road before we give the final approval uh, or denial. <laughs> we can do either ones, I guess. Uh, but we would need to to know more of the details of somebody really outlining you know, a nice plan. Here's my hundred foot down. Here's my two hundred feet. Here's where the erosion control. Here's this kind of thing. And right. then it um, we have some plans that we can fall back on when we uh, go forward. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. I really appreciate your getting out to see it and putting me on the agenda. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, and uh, we'll try not to hold you up too long on this. Good. Okay. So um, I make a motion that we just um, continue the hearing on this RDA until the next regular scheduled meeting, which I believe is 825, right? Yep, 825. Correct. Okay. Sean Levy, second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. Any other comments from the commissioners? Hearing none, I'll take a roll call vote to accept. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Uh, Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Pete Law, aye. Okay, motion passes three to no. Okay, we'll continue that. I think that's all the new business. Um, and so what we really wanted to do is spend a little bit of time with the commissioners tonight to go over some of the things that we had going on and just let folks know where things sit. I don't think it'll take too much longer. Um, so I have some items and there are no set um, order. Um, also next on the agenda though, we did, okay, let me just go through a few more things. Uh, there was a site visit on 198 North Main Street, which we just talked about. So the for the public record, uh, site visit was held on August 5th, uh, 198 North Main Street, um, completed by Pete Law, Kate Devlin, and Sean Libby. So just for the record, that occurred. Also for the record, um, we have sent RFPs, for, this is for the commissioners, we have sent RFP requests to uh, freshwater wetland specialists and Stockman Associates for the Sunny Days project per their ANRAD request. Um, we requested they get back to us by the 25th uh, with their proposals and then um, have something back to us uh, in that review um, by 30 days following. So, and I verified this with, with Tom again, the ANRAD is a request for delineation. We don't normally see an ANRAD um, versus a RDA or NOI. Uh, but it is a request for a delineation. It's a request for a delineation for the entire site. Um, so once we get some of this back, and I'm going to check with uh, town administrator uh, tomorrow and just make sure we can reach out and just let them know that that's our recommendation to continue even before we get the proposal back. But um, and they're very, they're very uh, they're very eager uh, to move ahead with this and. Uh, you know, we're, we got to get this delineation done before anything goes on to, uh, they need that to do the NOI, they need that to send in their materials for the planning board, they need that for all their engineering designs and so forth, which they've kind of asked us to review, but we don't have anything to review. So step one, just want to let you know that, that uh, those um, items have been sent. So thank you, Alex and Amy. Um, so the next order of business on the agenda is general board discussion. So we have a few items. Um, the reorg is we do need to appoint uh, a new clerk. Um, Bill Marapisi was our clerk. Uh, Bill is no longer on the commission as of the 1st of August. And so there's um, it's myself as chair. Uh, there's Kate and Sean here. And so I'll take any nominees 
if somebody wants to nominate somebody and then we can uh, take a vote or a motion on it, but uh, <laughs> we do need a clerk. Is there any sort of definition of the duties of a clerk anywhere? I've been looking in um, Conservation Commission outlines, like, is it keeping the minutes? What, what, is there a job description? Is that the only job description? Because I know it depends on the, on the commission and all that sort of thing. Yeah, but. I see Alex nodding your head. Um, um, yeah, so, uh, predominantly you're taking the minutes. Um, I know there's probably more to it than that. Um, but I think just for simplicity's sake at the moment, um, we'll just call it doing minutes. Um, I can get back to you with a better answer than that, uh, tomorrow. Anybody else, uh, that's in attendance have any, uh, Further idea of what the definition may be? Run, run. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for the help, Rachel. <laughs> A voice of reason. Uh, well, I can say that uh, I don't want to do it, but I wouldn't not do it. Uh, and if if Kate felt the same way that I did, and it's Kate or I, right? Uh, I was wondering if we might not be able to split that duty if we both had a desire to not do it um if that was possible to do like a half a year on half a year off during the course since our three-year terms pretty much overlap right so yeah. this would be a commitment for the whole three years right yeah yeah uh, yes oh, unless you good. resign from the specific position but alex or amy any thoughts i believe we can do that because we've talked about other things that the chair can do as far as nominating co-chairs or and so forth and so on can i just um, my safe answer is um you're the chair and you can <laughs> uh run the commission how you see fit all right well the, generally cool. speaking you get to like if somebody tags out for a meeting they tag out so that's what you can split it back and forth we've just talked about that in planning board because it's pretty that minutes taking takes time. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so if you're tagging yeah. it back and forth. Yeah, and thank you, Rachel. And when she can stuff so. I, I don't think it's a commitment for the full term. I could be wrong, but I think, you know, you can switch. No, is, am I wrong? No, I, okay. it's a yearly, you, you reconfigure yearly. Yeah, okay, thank you. Sean, I think that's a great idea. I was sort of think, thinking along similar lines um, in that it, it, yeah, it's something I can do, but yeah, it needs to get done. And I'm happy to, I would be happy to split it. We might even be able to work out. So like the summer is my busy season, but I'll bet it's not your busy season. And we might have different, if we work together, I think we could make it work as long as that worked for the town. I think we can produce, you know, um, the minutes as a team. Yeah. Okay. Co clerk. Okay. Let me see if I do. I have to make a motion on this, Alex, or is this just uh, an appointment of uh, volunteers? Um, I'm trying to remember if I we voted. Yeah, I think maybe a vote is okay. Um, I don't remember if I think I may okay. have just been delegated to do the, the minutes as the clerk <laughs> before. So um, a, All right. a vote, it's the a young vote guy doesn't... always gets it. The young guy, <laughs> they're like, everybody's. Mm. All it's, right, so it's not too bad. And make a motion that um, we nominate yeah, yeah, yeah. um, co-clerks, um, Kate Devlin and Sean Libby um, for the next one year period with um, the ability to have flexibility from a month or a month or meeting to meeting flexibility on um, who's going to decide to take that uh, duty on that specific meeting. I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much it made sense, but it. 
Okay, this, you guys are signed John's up. John's taking notes tonight, so he's the one who had to. Write. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> I can't talk. I'm taking. Notes. I think you're just like Coco. Right right. There you go. It's like they'll figure it out. Yeah. All right. So the motion's <laughs> been made and seconded. Any further comment? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. <laughs> Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Pete Law, aye. And I'm really going to really hold it to you guys. Everybody, every other time, whatever. We're going to put the time in. We keep schedule. You won't it. have to worry about it. Kate and I will figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Don't worry. Great. That's not on your plate. Good. It will happen. <laughs> Got that one said. Thank you. Uh, um, and seeing Rachel uh, Blaine on tonight, uh, Rachel's on the planning board. And um, I had a discussion with uh, Anna Lee Wolf. Wolf Kuhl, I think I got it right. Wolf Kuhl. Wolf Kuhl, uh, who is the chair of the planning board. And uh, we talked with Peggy up at the Frock uh, about how we might do better communications with the various uh, commissions, departments, agencies, and so forth within the town. Um, because there's a lot of things that overlap. And there's a lot of things that you know we should know about that the planning board is going to see and vice versa, so that we have some some idea what's going on. So it, it's really a communication um, issue. Uh, we're going to be working with the um, with the administrators in town to develop the processes uh, to make sure that the communication occurs. Uh, but we also have, um, you know, kind of decided, volunteered that it would be great to have uh, at least one member of each commission on on our different calls that's why i believe rachel got the short straw and is here tonight and uh you know and and we'll do that now there is um and i'll reach out to i forget the next planning board i looked it up is it the 15th 15th is the next planning board i believe i can make that one um but we do have to be careful in talking to various folks to make sure we don't have a a quorum uh, on each other's meetings uh, if the meeting is just an open meeting like if all three of us showed up, that would be a quorum of the Conservation Commission meeting on the planning board, and that doesn't work. It would have to be listed as a joint meeting to start off with. So we have to be careful on that so we can coordinate, but, um, and we will coordinate, um, but it, it, I think it's a great, um, great effort. Uh, we've, I don't wanna say we stumbled over each other a couple of times already, but we're just trying to learn each other's how we how we work and there's a couple of things that we've we can do better going forward so communication is great process is so, great <clears throat> periodically we've had we would like to be able to sometimes also streamline our meetings so we could actually meet together yeah so many times we're contingent on we're you're moving on something that's contingent on what you're moving on etc and actually in in favor of uh moving an applicant quicker more expediently not quicker but just better down the road sometimes it would be worth it for us to actually meet together so yeah. there's that possibility we have had that in the past we have done that um and it is helpful with with some of these um projects that are pretty pretty straightforward and you want to move um in a way that helps the applicant get their job done yeah no absolutely i uh, talked about that and some other things so overall it was really positive and I think it's very positive, you know, uh, of how the uh, folks are going to work together going forward. So I think that's great. Just wanted to bring that to your attention. I also want to let everybody know that the uh, Sean Libby was appointed to the Community Preservation Committee as a representative of CONCOM. Um, so that'd be effect 822 through June of next year. So thank you for to Sean for getting volunteered for that one. All right. Um, just a couple of quick items. Uh, I did mention I had a quite a long, lengthy, probably an hour and a half uh, call with Thomas Grusco, some DEP the other day. Can't go into a lot of the specifics because we went over specific projects that are still open hearings. Um, and we, we'll follow up on that, but a um, lot of good information. Uh, Tom's a great resource. Um, and I know uh, Alex and uh, Amy reach out to Tom. Uh, when I gave them a lot of questions. <laughs> um, so very, very productive. Uh, I'll share, you know, with what I can, um, you know, with each of you on, on different things, but uh, great resource um, to be out there and it's available to the commission. Um, 
I don't know if you have to go through me or if you can go through him directly, but he's very open and, and, and um, available. So I just wanted to pass that on that uh, uh, Tom Gruskos, uh, if you need his um, contact information, I can certainly get that to you. Um, we also, since this is not a, a hearing, it's just a uh, discussion. Oh, uh, Pete, can yes. I back up? Yeah, I should. <laughs> this is my problem with being clerk. So <laughs> about Tom Griscos, new circuit rider, right? Yeah. Um, he's, do you understand how they're covering Western Mass? They have two circuit riders for Western Mass and they're splitting them up by town name. So D okay. gets Tom Griscos. But there is another Western Mass circuit rider that could be working for, you know, Conway and uh, you know the next like Waitley has a different circuit rider than we do okay no I didn't realize that so and I I just learned it and I thought I'd mention that that's good okay yeah there used to be just Mark uh, I think covered everything but um all right um we can talk about and Alex tell me if I can't but I believe it because it's a discussion but we did uh on the old village road uh, notification it's a discussion only we've uh, have supplied them with the material requested um, and we reached out to them to hopefully uh, show up on the 25th um, for our next meeting we haven't heard back yet so that's just to give you an update on where we stand with with that um, old village road lot 2930 um, so we've had to reach out um, went through a lot of review uh, just waiting to hear back. We'll just wait to see. That is an open discussion, so it's not a it's hearing, so it's we can pick it up whenever, I guess. Um, last item I had was that the twenty the agenda for the twenty fifth is going to be another marathon. Um, it's it's we've got at least three or four uh, hearings being continued. Uh, we have now again have to consider the uh, RDA that we've reviewed again today. Um, and I'm hoping we we might be able to wrap up one or two of them. We made some progress on a couple on <clears throat> some of the questions that were raised. Um, but you know, there's a lot to review on the ones that are uh, in play right now. So I just ask you to, you know, really uh review all the all the uh documents that have been sent in um <clears throat> oh excuse me <clears throat> um and be ready to really go through that so we might be able to close out some and we can um maybe think about some of that before we get there but it's going to be a big long night is um kate devlin here is it possible to start a little earlier to do some of the the like the regular business first uh, if everybody agrees, we could do probably 645. We've done that before. You can, yeah, yeah the, the agenda hasn't been posted yet, so you can, um, okay. we would just have to let, you know, let the applicants know that, um, we're going to start a little earlier. Um, I mean, you can start at five o'clock if you want, but I just, we just got to let everybody know. Um, okay. All right, we'll, we'll take a look at what that is, what we need to do. Um, the first item is not a hearing continuation, but it may be very lengthy. And I do have to put some time frames on the other hearing continuations. So um, folks can show up uh, for the specific ones. I think we, oh, Alex, I think, I know we got three open. Maybe it's four right now. Um, so we'll look at that. I'd rather start early so we don't end okay. too late. <laughs> My brain starts to go to sleep. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> but, and yeah. it's, you can just end too and continue again. Yeah. It's not yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. We've done that at times. Uh, um, the only other thing I have is we had a request in from Cumberland Farms for a certificate of completion on um, some of their activities they had there. On um, It was for their second NOI. I've got some clarification on that um, from Tom. 
and uh, I believe it's specific to that requirement on the second NOI that they had. So um, we may that may get uh, added to it as well. I just gotta check a couple more boxes on that one. I think we can do a. Um, uh, we'll probably do a. a, a a COC, it's a typical completion with some conditions on it, but I, I think that'll that'll fly. So that's another one hanging out there. Um, that's in in play. I don't know if I missed anything. There might be another one coming up here fairly soon as well, and we'll just have to wait to see if we get that paperwork. Um, you could do a second meeting in September, or meet every week if you need to. Um, yeah, we'll see what the. Out. 25th does and then yeah. uh, we may have to I got some clocks on some of these uh, at least one of them um, yeah we may have to yeah we may have to have two two meetings again in September so that would be May June July August September we've had two meetings I think <laughs> yeah. do you guys get a break in the winter when everything freezes over and you know, no one wants to build anything every once in a while uh, like three or four years ago it would be like a month off here and there, but last year or two, it's just been nonstop, um, right? Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of the utilities will start with their stuff early in the year because they want to start yeah, yeah, yeah. as soon as yeah, the snow yeah. goes. And uh, yeah. Yeah. You want to you join us, Rachel? <laughs> Twice a month, plenty. When you guys start talking like every week, like, uh, uh, and your, and your visits and your site visits. My, yeah. Uh, my hat's off to you. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, been a busy summer for sure. Uh, that's what I had. Any additional items from any of the commissioners? Are there any, um, any ad candidates oh, for um, additional members? I have a potential who's, I believe, still out of country until the middle of this month. She said she'd get back to me once she get back. So, um, you have a vacancy? Yeah, we have one one opening right now. So yeah, if anybody still knows anybody, I, we only have this one candidate that believes she's interested. Uh, and and it's a fairly strong candidate, but uh, yeah, I've contacted some others and um, haven't heard back or have had no interest. So anybody else would join the party. I was heard they the nice crowd. I I I vouched for you guys. I... <laughs> they heard there was an open clerk position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there might be a chair here pretty soon too. If you keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any so any other items from the commissioners? Any other items? Oh, that's funny. I look like Amy had his hand up, had her hand up, but that's my mouse is a hand right now. Um, any other comments from anybody participating still? All right. Well, I would take a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> well, we got to do it a little more official. Uh, Let's I'll see move. if I can do this right. Oh, go ahead. You do it. I'll copy next time. Uh, now I'm confused because it sounds like I'm going to do it wrong. I'd like to move that we close tonight's meeting and we continue our discussions on August 25th at our next regular meeting. At 749. At oh, right. We're closing the meeting. Would you like to close? PM. Would you like to retract your motion? That's really helpful for the I clerk, know. just FYI. I'd like to retract my motion and rephrase it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to move that we close the meeting at 7.49 p.m. tonight <laughs> on August 11th. I think it me? works. Uh, do I hear a second on that motion? Sean Libby, second. That's great. So the motion's on the table. Any further um, comments? Oh, hearing now, take a roll call to accept the motion to close the meeting. Kate. Kate Devlin, aye. Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. All right, Pete Law, aye. And I just want you to know there's this introduction to Robert's Rules of Order.
that everybody should read. And it, it goes through all this great stuff. So if anybody wants a copy of that, I have one right here handy. So you did it just right.